Our catechism recitation for this evening, as we begin the solemnities of the season of Advent, uh, we use as the recitation the small catechism's teaching on holy confession, particularly the parts of confession and absolution this evening. What is confession? Confession embraces two parts. The one is that we confess our sins. The other, that we receive absolution or forgiveness from the confessor as from God himself. And in no wise doubt, but firmly believe that our sins are thereby forgiven before God in heaven. What sins should we confess? Before God, we should plead guilty of all sins, even of those which we do not know, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But before the confessor, we should confess those sins alone, which we know and feel in our hearts. Which are these? Here consider your station according to the Ten Commandments, whether you are a father, mother, son, daughter, master, mistress, a manservant or maidservant, whether you have been disobedient, unfaithful, slothful, whether you have grieved anyone by words or deeds, whether you have stolen, neglected, or wasted aught, or done other injury. Our opening hymn tonight is number 95 in the Lutheran hymnal. The Advent hymn, originally written by St. Ambrose and recast by Martin Luther, Savior of the Nations Come. Oh, oh, oh. 
the order of service is the order for Holy Communion from page 15 in anticipation of our heralding of the angels as they announce the Lord's birth. During our celebration of Christmas, we withhold the song of the angels, the glory of Excelsis, during the season of Advent. With that exception, page 15 in the Lutheran hymnal, let's sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart. Confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgivest the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I Sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ. To be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Amen. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Stir up 
we beseech Thee, Thy power, O Lord, and come, that by Thy protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by Thy mighty deliverance, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Mm -hmm. Amen. Please be seated. The lesson for this evening is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord that I will perform that good thing which I have promised to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause to grow up to David a branch of righteousness. He shall execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In those days Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which she will be called, the Lord our righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel, nor shall the priests, the Levites, like a man to offer burnt offerings before me, to kindle grain offerings, and to sacrifice continually. Here ends the lesson. The epistle for the first Sunday in Advent is from St. Paul's epistle to the Romans, the 13th chapter. Pray. And do this knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly, as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Here ends the epistle. <coughs> All they that wait for thee shall not be ashamed at all, Lord. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Alleluia, alleluia. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Alleluia. Stand and respond with the triple Alleluia verse. Mm -hmm. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Mm -hmm. Glory be. and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. 
All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise be to The Nicene Three. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Our next hymn will consist of four verses of the Advent Carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. You'll see in the bulletin that the first verse is verse 7. That's because it properly is. But that uh, has become associated with this carol so much that that's what it's, um, it, it has become like unto the first verse. So we're going to sing 7, 1, 2, 3, and then uh, after this sermon, immediately after, uh, 4, 5, 6, and 7 again. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
to you hence peace from God your Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ, His Son, your King, who comes to you, to all who believe lowly, that He might raise up the lowly to His own exalted state of royalty in the courts of God as testified by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The bulletin cover for this night captures the events that take place just before Jesus rides into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday. He beholds the city and weeps over it. For this city is supposed to be the city of God in the world. It's supposed to be the shining example to all the world of the Christian faith and how men and women and children are to live with loving faith towards God and faithful love towards their neighbors as themselves. But they have fallen so far from their initial grace that it's pitiful. And so Jesus weeps. And then he moves to action. This is the theme of Advent. Advent coming from a Latin term that means come to or go toward. It's an action word. It's about movement and particularly about the movement of God towards us poor, pitiable people that He might raise us up out of the valley of depression, out of the pit of despair, out of our lowly state, fallen from grace, so that He might exalt us, even us, to the status of children of God. Siblings of Jesus. Possessors of the very Holy Spirit of God. But it takes God's action to do it. Not ours, but God's. And it's for this reason that the new church year begins with the first Sunday following November 30th. November 30th is the festival day of Jesus' disciple, St. Andrew. And the Sunday following that is always the first Sunday in Advent, the very beginning of the new church year. And we set our thoughts and our devotional meditations properly on what begins it all. The coming of God into the world as the king to become subject so that he might again save his lowly subjects for his everlasting kingdom. And so that we might know that this God is a God of mercy. That this is indeed a God who is approachable. Not like the great and powerful Wizard of Oz, who with his fearsome voice and the flashing of light and the roaring thunder scared those who had otherwise come to see him as that favorite film of mine depicts. 
but rather this is the God who comes to bid his lowly people to come to him after he first comes in humility to us. It's again why the entrance into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday is such a beautiful gospel that we hear it twice in the church here. Firstly, to begin it. And then secondly, to mark that great Sunday when Jesus finally makes his entrance into Jerusalem so that he might die on the cross outside of that city on Good Friday. He is the everlasting King. But He comes to you because He loves you that much. He comes to earth to rescue the people of earth. He comes to His people Israel to rescue and save Israel, the faithful ones. And then just like Him, who is the God of action, He then moves us by His mighty Word and Holy Spirit acting within us. It's why our epistle for this Sunday, the first Sunday in the church year, then tells us how we are to respond to this righteous branch that has stemmed from the stump of Jesse, the father of the great King David. For Jesus comes in the human line on the family tree of the great King David in his earthly human lineage. But of course he also comes begotten of God the everlasting Father. And he's come so that we might bear his name, the Lord our righteousness being baptized into His name. He puts His identity on us, branding us, if you will, as Christians who have put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We wear His royal robe, which is spotless before God. And when God looks upon you, He sees His Son who died to take away all of your sins, who rose again to declare that all who wear the robe of Jesus have everlasting life, belong in that heavenly choir of God's holy saints, and then live like that. To put on the Lord Jesus Christ is nothing other than that. To live after the example of our Lord Jesus, who has already kept all of the commandments of God perfectly for us. That we rely on His perfect standing before God. But then because we are in Him, with Him on us, we're motivated and empowered and enlightened to live like Jesus, with love to our Father, with love to our fellow man, and to do everything that God leads us to do in this life of love. Because this is what love is. It's to love the God who has first loved us so much that He come, came for us, to rescue us through His Son, the other Sundays of this season of Advent strike that same theme, but from different perspectives. The second Sunday in Advent will proclaim to us the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into the world at the end of this world, so that we are to ever be ready and watchful 
But again, that just simply means to believe that he is coming again and to live as though that's true because it is. And the theme of the third and the fourth Sundays are reminders of how this same Jesus who once came into the world, who is again coming into the world, is still in this world and among his people. He comes to us this night in the word of the Holy Gospel, in all three lessons that describe he is coming to us once in the fulfillment of prophecy as we hear through the prophet Jeremiah. The fulfillment of that prophecy proclaimed in the Gospel of St. Matthew and how he continues to come and endow our lives with his grace and his mercy and his power and his love so that we live like he does. Indeed, O come, O come, Emmanuel, as you once did and as you once will to us every day. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. In the conclusion of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, 4, 5, 6, and 7 again.
join in the general prayer. Almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you even as we marvel and wonder over your love for us. You who are the king of the universe who left your holy throne to come down and to be like one of us, even to be a servant of humankind so that you might serve us with rescue from sin and from death and from hell and instead give us the forgiveness of sins salvation and renewed life by the power of your holy gospel and holy spirit continue to raise us up now to live after your very likeness with faith toward your Father, love towards our fellow man, and also lifting our own selves up, even as you have lifted each and every one of us, raising us up from the font of holy baptism, glistening with your grace. causing us to soar even to heavenly heights by the gospel that you have proclaimed to us on this night. And especially in your coming to us through this bread and wine that you declare to be your very body and very blood, that we might be in communion with you throughout our time in this life and even forevermore. Continue to bless your holy Israel, your people of faith, all through this world. And pray that you would bless the missionary endeavors of your church in all places, so that particularly during this time that the world turns its attention to a different kind of Christmas, that the proclamation of your people might turn their hearts back to the true meaning of Christmas and your very birth on earth. We pray that you would continue to bless this little congregation and continue to bind our hearts in one so that we might be united in this holy faith and united in love as your own holy family. Continue to bless all of the members of this family in all of the many ways that you have, and so in the many ways that this family trusts that you will continue to provide daily bread for all of their needs, for all of their lives, day by day. Continue to grant to the world peace, especially by putting an end to all warfare. We would pray that would happen in the Ukraine, and that the fledgling efforts at peacemaking in the Middle East might also continue to be extended even to permanency. We pray that you would grant consolation and comfort to all those who are sorrowing and mourning in these days of the past and the loved ones, whether in recent days or days gone by, and particularly comfort my dear niece as she fondly and dearly misses her mother my dear sister Sandra, we pray that you would continue to be the great physician of the body and that you would bring healing to all. Continue to give to each and every one of us good health. Help us with all of our needs to keep us free from colds, to help loose teeth fall out easily and that allowing us yet to chew our foods and that the new permanent teeth would grow in quickly, but also straight, beautiful, and healthful. We ask that you would continue to be with and bless Bob, giving thanks that the accident, though serious, was not even more so, and pray that you would grant him healing from all of his injuries. We ask that you would also continue to bless us in all of our travels and we give thanks for the safe travel to and from Alaska 
to see that beautiful aurora borealis that you have painted into the night sky in the northern hemisphere. And pray that we might ever gaze upon all the wonders of creation, which indeed sing your glory and cause us to utter our praise for your majesty and might, which you turn to us in love. For these and whatsoever other things thou would have us ask of thee, O God, but save unto us. We pray for the sake of your bitter sufferings and death, O Jesus Christ. You who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. from the wrath to be revealed when he cometh again in glory. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we long and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying,
Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Oh, Christ our Lord, Jesus, continue to come to you to wherever you might roam, okay, and continue to bless you with all that you need so that you would have the fullness of his gifts in your life for all your days. Take need this is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for all of your sins.
Take a drink of the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shed for the remission of all of your sins. His body and blood strengthen your own flesh and blood in the one true faith and in communion of the God who exalts you to his everlasting glory. Depart in peace. Amen. The Nunchibis in the remaining portion of the communion. Spring. 
Yeah.